you feel for him too. He's trying to do the right thing. So Ward is obviously going through a lot and he's a little bit torn between, I feel like what he, what's right and wrong. How would you kind of explain his actions? Cause I read somewhere that you had said, you don't think he's a bad guy. He just has made bad decisions. Do you stand by that? Well, I, I guess that's a little tricky because if you make bad decisions, if you do bad things, yeah, you're a bad guy. But mm -hmm. I'm saying it's not somebody, I didn't want to play and they didn't want me to play a mustache twirler that's just bad, always was bad, and only is bad because he is bad. It's mm -hmm. it's not that simple. He starts off as a kind of father that we all can understand is being protective of his daughter. And he's also been looking for this gold. Um, and then the guy that he's gonna get the gold with double crosses him and they get in a fight and that guy hits his head. And that's the moment where it all turns, where he's laying there and he's certain he's already gone and he's already dying or dead and it's like am i gonna upend my entire life am i that i have everything am i gonna risk that all to do the right thing is how he was <laughs> think, you know and the answer he comes up with is no this is uh, i can't help him so why ruin my life so that is the first decision that really sends him down this path i think that's how bad decisions are so often we double down now our writers, the story makes him double down in ways that are mind blowing that even he can't believe. There's no part of Ward that goes, yeah, this is how I do, you know, this is me. Ward's like, oh, no, this is happening. What do I gotta do right now? What do I gotta do to protect Sarah? Wait, Rafe, no. And so he's always just trying to hold it together. But it's the kind of thing you can't hold together, especially those scenes on the on the tarmac where John B stops and Peter can shows up and if you look at Ward, Ward's not masterminding anything. He's just trying to hold this world together and get out free. Um, that's what I love about him is he's, he's desperate and many faceted. Yeah, he definitely has, and especially in season two, but we saw a little bit of it in season one, that a different way of parenting when it comes to Rafe and Sarah, because it seems that he, he's obviously protective and like as a father loves his children. I mean, there's no doubt in that, but how would you kind of explain that and kind of tease that for season two? Because there is very different dynamics going on there. I think we heighten with that. It's so funny because I think that in a lot of families, some kids feel like, oh, he's the favorite. She's the favorite. There's always that thing. Uh, my, my own brothers and sisters used to kid <laughs> that my dad, that I was my dad's favorite. At one time, the three of them called. I had three of them and they called and said, uh, hey, dad, it's your three favorite kids. And he was joking around. He said, uh, what, chip, chip, and chip? And they all started laughing. So every family sort of knows that dynamic. I think the writers heightened that a little bit. Sarah is this princess. Why wouldn't she be his favorite? She's amazing. And Rafe is not as amazing. But that's the thing about Rafe is that the way he is played with that heart, that absolute, you know, uh, you feel for him too. He's trying to do the right thing, um, but he's just not able to get there.